another young black male recently lost his life. And yet again, we have another ridiculous response to that lost life that will never solve the problem. Now I discussed a nearly foolproof method to stop most of the deaths of young black males at the hands of the police, but I can't spread the message very far all by myself. You see, if black lives really matter, then why don't we hear many folks advocate for changing what we actually have the power to change, ourselves. At some point, we have to realize that young black males are continually having run-ins with the police for one reason, higher rates of criminal activity. It's for this reason that we don't see many black women, senior citizens, or toddlers being shot because those groups commit crimes at a rate much lower than that of their young black male peers. Many of us want to make these deaths about race, but the evidence simply does not support racism being the leading reason for the shootings. If it were, we would expect to see blacks from all walks of life experiencing the exact same thing that low-income young black males with criminal histories are experiencing. That obviously isn't happening. And for whatever reason, the media and most blacks completely ignore the fact that young white males are also being shot by police. Do it! Do it! Stop it! Do it! Stop it! So, it's more of an age and gender thing than it is a race thing. But how many people are crying, young male lives matter? One thing is for certain, we can control our own actions. We can eliminate the need for the police in our communities by keeping fathers in the household and by eliminating the love affair that many of us have with criminality. Don't try to deny it, folks. Just listen to our favorite music. You ain't never caught a body. Nah. You ain't never pulled the trigger. Nah. You ain't never sold a block. Hugging what block you niggas came from. You ain't never faced a life sentence. Nah. You ain't never been a menace. Hugging menace is a shy chick. Hugging on a new old dog. Hugging off the land of my world. Law, law by the citizens. Get it if they get involved. Watch our favorite reality TV shows. Talking about Cardi in his text, what happened? Oh. Oh. We're gonna put a little more distance between you guys so we can have this conversation. Don't you know New York bitches are savages? Okay. We have a culture filled with violence and we love it. This is why I question the things some of us consider to be huge problems in black America. Perhaps instead, we should consider culture. In 2016, following the shooting of Joseph Mann, Sacramento, California enacted a citywide policy that required all police officers to wear body cams as well as receive increased training in de-escalation techniques. Apparently, only one of those two things was put to use earlier this month in the shooting of a 22-year-old Stefan Zoe Clark. The video footage suggests that the police didn't seem to have the time or restraint to exercise any de-escalation techniques. Instead, they chose to make a split-second decision. What we do know is what we can see in the body cam and the thermal footage from the helicopter. What we saw is a young man engaging in some suspicious activity, running through yards, looking into parked car windows, and jumping over fences. These are certainly not normal activities for law-abiding citizens. So the reason for the police being there is that they had received calls of a young man breaking into at least two cars. The caller stated that the suspect had broken into his truck and a neighbor's vehicle, then ran into a nearby backyard once he was confronted by the man in his baseball bat. What's going on there? Yeah, uh, this guy's going down the street breaking windows of cars. He busted both my truck windows out. He busted these in the people's backyard right now, uh, across the street from my place. He busted two of my windows out and he broke the car's window out across the street from me. The witness could not see the race of the man, only the fact that he had on a black hoodie. Is he black, white, Hispanic, Asian? He had a hoodie on. I couldn't tell, ma'am. We have two um, ground units coming, too, that are on Meadow View right now, so they're okay. about a block and a half away. Yep. Their dogs are going crazy in the back there, so he's, okay. I think he's still there. Good. All of that seems to have prompted the helicopter, which was soon filming the scene from above. 
Someone from the helicopter described a suspect as picking up a toolbar and breaking a window of a home. And of course, all of this seems like a reasonable reason for police pursuit. Where it gets a little tricky is in what happened after police arrived in the Clark's grandmother's backyard where the shooting ended this young man's life. Show me your gun! Show me your gun! 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 Sure, we have the body cam footage, but that doesn't give us the best view of what happened. From the thermal video, it does seem that Clark was moving towards the officers who were at the corner of the house with their guns out. And from the body cam footage, it seems that the black cop called out about a gun some seconds before the white cop asked for Clark to show his hands. Show me your gun! And then, a second after that, the white officer cries, gun, gun, gun! and fires 10 shots. His black partner also lets off 10 shots quickly following the first officers. Now knowing what we know about these shootings that occur between young men and officers of the law, it's quite difficult for me to understand this young man's actions. The rhetoric teaches us that police shoot young black males for little to nothing. If the majority of black men in America think that that is a fact, then why would they have anything in their hands when the police are pursuing them? Why would they not raise their hands high and stay still? I know I would. Some believe that the police were too quick to shoot. This is certainly a possibility, but from the video footage it's hard to tell if Clark's forward motion was aggressive in nature or not. When your life's at stake, as police lives often are, one wrong decision could literally lead them to their own death. And we see how serious they take this when we look at the video after the shooting. They still are on guard, even after the suspect is shot and motionless. Police department, can you hear us? We need to know if you're okay. We need, we need to get you medics, but we can't go over there to get you help unless we know you're, you don't have the weapon. Now, as I said, many have decided to discuss race in this case. But once again... One of the officers who was responsible for at least 10 of the 20 bullets fired is black. Plus, it was dark outside and the officers were simply responding to a call that didn't give the race of the suspect. The person who called the police didn't know the race of the suspect due to him having on a hoodie. So did race play a role in this case? I'd say it's highly doubtful. Nationwide, the numbers show that more whites are shot than blacks at bar by police. Also, in what a black Harvard economist called the most surprising result of his career, he found that there's no bias in police shootings. I've made several videos on these issues with supporting data included. You can check those out in the links below. The facts of this case should be looked at individually, just like any other case, leaving race to be looked at as something only as important as any other descriptor, such as height, weight, hair color, clothing, etc. Instead of race, we should consider that culture played a larger role in this killing, just as it has in many others. That culture is one that advocates criminality and violence. Unfortunately for Stephen Zoe Clark, he was very much a part of that culture. Tell me about your brother, Stevante. You know, he was a hustler. He had to go get it by any means necessary. As are his friends, neighbors, and family members. This cultural choice gave him many opportunities to get into violent altercations with not only police officers, but his peers as well, including possibly his son's mother. Now, we know that Zoe Clark had a criminal history. I was able to obtain what looks to be his court records from February 2013 when he was arrested for possession of a firearm. Having a short-barreled rifle or a shotgun and possession of a controlled substance. And in January of 2017, he was arrested on two counts of domestic abuse. And just next month, February 20th, he was scheduled to complete a batterer's treatment program. Of course, pointing out his criminal history is not me trying to excuse his killing. To the contrary, I'm actually trying to point out something that is an obvious pattern in these shootings of black men. In many of these cases, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray... Alton Sterling, to name a few, the young men had criminal records. My point is that crime is what's bringing these young men into the presence of these officers. 
If there was no criminal activity, there would be no altercation in many of these cases. For the most part, squeaky clean young black men are not being shot by the police, which by the way, we would expect to see if this was all about race. The other piece of this is that most of these shootings occur in areas where crime has been a problem. So even if there were a situation where a cop made a bad stop, the neighborhood criminals are responsible for the police being there and should be held to the majority of the blame. The police are simply there to do their job. They would have no job to do were there no hardened criminals in these areas, period. Again, these shootings are not happening to every black person. They're happening to a specific demographic, one that has a criminal history and or that lives in an area where crime is a problem and a part of the culture. Now in my research of this case, I spent a good deal of time looking at this one particular individual, Stevante Clark otherwise known as Pharaoh Da Vinci. Trayvon Martin with a Glock can't kill me nigga some what you got. He's the brother of Stefan Clark. This guy truly has a magnetic personality and perhaps a future career in music. Now I may be a bit jaded or something, but he seems way too happy to be in front of all these cameras. CNN live, got my, my cousin with me. We live, slash baby. Slash manager, slash we, security. We live, baby. Slash, slash everything, yeah, everything, baby. What you mean? Hey, yeah, we out here. We love y'all. We, we have to go CNN right now. We rocking. Mm. And he's certainly celebrating his going viral. I could go into more detail, but, but just take a look for yourself. We don't know whether or not these uh, two policemen have had prior uh, uh, complaints because of their behavior in the community, but we are we are looking for who is this? This is Savante, the brother of hey. Savante. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, what? Black okay. Lives Matter. Yeah, okay, wait a minute, hang on, hang on, let me finish. I was making a point for you. Huh? Wait a minute, hang on. Huh? 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 We're so sorry for the loss of your brother and for the road that you now no, have you don't, to walk. I, well, well, no, no, I, well, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need you to be sorry because I can't do nothing when I'm sorry, okay? I need you to pray okay. for me. Because, because we got this. We tired of the sorries and, and, and the trying to exploit our pain and all that. Okay, we're trying to move forward. We're trying to bring peace and justice. We want community centers, resource right. centers, libraries, our own security teams. We're trying to get it for us. Step on Clark! 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 I know it's even tougher because there was a wake hell for your brother, uh, Stefan. First, let me express again my sympathy here. How's your family holding up? How are you holding up? What does that mean? Next question. Okay. Um, obviously, you are in grief right now, and listen. I'm I, I, not in grief. All right. We haven't slept. We haven't ate. The media keeps following us everywhere we go. The only person that got the message, and that was just before we came on the air, was the mayor. He has called me, and he said he's going to help us build the library and the recreational center. That's 24 hours. <sighs> I don't have much more here, folks. Only a few recommendations. We have to stop blaming all of this on racism. There's way too much evidence to the contrary. Moreover, blaming racism gets us nowhere and in many cases gets us a Ferguson effect that lightens the police presence in black communities where police are needed the most at this particular juncture in time. We only get more black victims when that happens. We certainly need to hold the police to a high standard, but in doing that, we also need to get our own house in order by holding ourselves to a higher standard. We have to consider that some of us are a larger part of the problem, and we certainly must consider culture. I'm Chi Brown. Remember to subscribe, like, 
comment, and share this. I appreciate it. I'm out.